Hey guys, Joe Pajinski here with Advanced Innovations and I want to say thank you to everybody that continues to subscribe and comment and leave me the thumbs up. Awesome. A couple of videos back I showed you how to precision indicate a part in a three jaw chuck and the primary objective on that video was to tell you that you must establish square before you establish concentric. It was very important. Well I got a lot of feedback on that one and a lot of the same type of comment and what it boiled down to was, hey guy, we don't have an adjustable chuck. So although we can get the whip out of our part and we can get the part to run square with the machine, it's still out of concentricity when we get there. So today I'm gonna to take you over to the lathe and I'm gonna show you no matter how bad your lathe is, you can get a part to run fairly true if you're willing to just take your time and do a little bit of homework before you do it, all right? So let's take a walk over the machine. Two steps behind me, I'm gonna reposition the camera here in a second and I'm going to show you and you're gonna to have to take my word for it that I am gonna throw that three jaw chuck so far out of alignment that concentricity is just never gonna happen but I'm gonna show you how to make it happen alright let's take a walk alright guys first thing I'm gonna do is to throw the chuck body as far off the center as I possibly can and I'm gonna look for a continuous surface to do that so I've slipped the machine out of gear I don't want to pick up on the track or bounce across here, so I'm going to look for a nice in-between. And right there behind the jaws is usually a good place to do that. So let's set the indicator in there and see what we got. Right, my chuck body is about two thou out. I'm going to loosen up all my adjusting screws. I'm going to take screw number one and I'm going to tighten it. I'm going to go to screw number three, which is 180 degrees on the other side, and make sure it's not making contact, which it is not. So I'm still going to tighten it down until I feel it's pretty secure, which it is. I'm going to take two and do the same thing. All that's going to do is just pull it in a small diagonal. I'm going to go to four, make sure that's not touching, which it is not. Okay, so one and two are really tight. I'm just gonna snug three so it doesn't come flying out of there. And I'm just gonna bump number four so that doesn't move either. Okay, let's take a look at how the chuck is running. All right, well that's more like it. You got what, minus six and a half, plus six and a half, 13 thou out. That's probably more like something you'd find on a home shop or an old machine. Let's relocate the indicator and put a part in the chuck, tighten it down and see how bad it is. Okay, now for sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna use a half inch drill blank. position my indicator and let's see how bad this runs hopefully it's really terrible that would be great for this exercise That's ah, awful, huh? All right, we're about 15 thou out of concentricity. Let's see if it's straight. Yeah, we're pretty good. 15 thou out. Now, if you put a part in that was 15 thou out, you could take a lot of time and you could shim your jaws, but every time you open and close your chuck, you'd have to worry about where that shim is and where it went. Let's see if you can get a better look at that indicator. Okay, that's a solid 14 and a half, 15 thou out. There's many ways to overcome this. Naturally, you could put soft jaws in. If you're using a piece this small, chances are you'd use a collet anyway. But if you don't have collets and you're not going to worry about that, let's see how we can fix that with this particular chuck. 
and I can promise you I'm not going to move the adjustment on this chuck for the duration of this exercise. Okay, go get yourself a piece of scrap stock. Two or th I would say at least three to four times the diameter of the part that you're going to hold or the diameter that you're going to locate on. Stick it in your machine. If this is a part that has any kind of other features that you would want to locate from, you can actually bore it into the part, into this piece of scrap, for a locator feature on your depth as well. But for what I'm doing, just to show you what can be done, I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, I'm going to spin this. Hopefully you can see that it's still terribly out of concentricity, which it is. I'm going to face it off. Since we're working with half inch stock and you know we're going to punch a half inch hole in here, I'm going to start with a 7 16 drill. And there's a reason for that. Stay tuned. All the way through with your hole. It's very important. I'm going to deburr this part, flip it around, and face it. This have a clean slug. Still means nothing on the final product. Okay, at this point, before you take it out, grab a magic marker, a Sharpie marker, a wax marker, anything you can grab that'll write on it. And mark where your jaws are. Okay, three marks, each one in line with the jaw. And I always mark where my key is as well, just because. So since my chuck key is now facing 12 o'clock, I'm going to put a little dot back here. Just to let me know that's where my key is. Let's take it over to the bandsaw and work some magic on it. And if you just watched that video on how to repair the vertical adjustment on the do-all, this is why I had to do that. So let's take a walk. Okay guys, now what we're going to do is we're going to put some relief cuts in here and the one thing that 
would scare me because this doesn't have a very large footprint. And as, as you're feeding this into the blade this way, that it rolls forward. That it rolls forward into the blade or pulls you into the blade or scares you to the point where you recoil into the blade. So if you have to do anything like this, it's not a bad idea to stick it in a vise. And let the vise do the holding. So as you push it across the machine, the vise is doing the work. And naturally, you can't cut all the way through with this because the vise pressure would clamp down on it. But we'll get to that. So let me do the relief cuts and get back to you. Nice to have a height adjustment that works. part is very warm right now so I'm going to take it over to the sink and cool it off. I'll be right back. Okay I'm well into this. I have two nice relief slots that are about an eighth of an inch away from the ID and one that's considerably wider on the back side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to push it all the way through to the center very carefully. it is larger than the other two and there's a reason for that and just because it's not on center that doesn't really mean anything so long as you have the three point reference that you had basically in the beginning you're good to go I'm gonna go find a piece of shim stock that I can stick in here I'll be right back okay we got that too This is what you're looking for. You're looking for a bushing with a large cut in it, a piece of shim stock that fits in there loosely, a relatively thick wall. You don't want it paper thin. You want it to be relatively rigid. And let's walk back over the machine and show you what we're going to do with this.
Okay, now I know when I did this initially, the black magic marker marks were towards the outside. And there's my key rotation. The chuck key is straight up now, so I'm going to put it back in the machine and turn it just a little bit. So now the slots are in between the jaws. Now here comes the reason for the shim. Put the shim in your part, squeeze down on it until it closes up. If it doesn't close up, make the relief cuts deeper. But you want it to have a lot of resistance on the chuck as you're tightening it down. You don't want it to close easily. You want some resistance. And I'm definitely getting resistance. I'm going to open up these slots just a little bit more. But don't open them up so far that when your finished diameter comes along, you break through the web and the whole thing flies apart. Okay, I am about a sixteenth of an inch away now, and I know when this opens up, that's a seven sixteenths drill I just used. It'll be relatively close. Get back in there. And squeeze down on it. You want your shim to protrude inside the drilled hole. That is okay and preferred. All right. That is nice and tight. The bushing has closed up on the shim. The shim's not going anywhere front to rear. I'm going to pass the drill back through there just to knock the shim off. And let's see if I can get away with that. This is still an undersized hole so that it's okay if you see it bouncing around. What we're doing right now is we're just taking off the part of that shim that was protruding into the hole through the wide slot. And we're here. Now if you can see down inside the bore, the shim is now part of the ID, so you have a continuous hole. You want that to be a continuous surface all the way through, that's very important. Right now I'm looking for the recommended drill size for a half inch reamer. So I'm going to bore this out to 484 just for the first quarter of an inch or so. Just to true up the hole.
I'm going to go through with the 484 drill. The movement should be minimal that you see on camera. any part of the shim that is protruding on the face of the part, face that off at this time. If you don't have a reamer to fit your part, this is where you bore the finished size. But I do have a reamer, so I'm only going to bore a pilot diameter in the very front to track the reamer straight so that the reamer doesn't follow a drilled hole. Looking for 500. comes the reamer. The machine is running at 235 RPM right now. This is a six flute high speed reamer. And because it's a through hole, I'm going to push it all the way through. It's a relatively good pilot hole, and we should be in good shape. Guys, now the most important part of this project right now is right now. What you want to do is unloosen your jaws so that this particular material opens up, but it doesn't flex, it doesn't lose its rotation uh, just enough to get this out. That's it, because the 
wall thickness right here should be acting like a spring and it should keep your bushing in place. Success. Bushing didn't move, got the shim out. All is well. Let's put the blank in that we're gonna suppose to be your part. Snug it back up. Drop an indicator on it and see if it works. Now this chuck body is running out 15 thousandths of an inch right now. And if I'm running within one, I'll be thrilled. Let's see if it's straight. I'm going to really torque this thing down and see what we get. Okay, that's a 501 reamer that I just used. This is a 500 pin. We were 15 thou out initially. For a home lathe, I think that would be more than acceptable. One thousandth total indicator reading, that's five ten thousandths of an inch off center from the 15 that we started with. This is a very good trick. Take the part out. Don't let the bushing move. It's still pretty rigid in there because there's a lot of pressure on it. Put it back in, see what we get for repeatability. Can't complain there, guys. We took out 99% of the air. If you can get a thousandths on your backside, I think you're close enough. I hope that helps. It's a good trick. If you want it super precision, make your hole the same size as your part. Bore it. Take your time. This was quick. This was on camera, so I didn't do it. Uh, super precision. I'm happy with a thou on the backside because if you have to deal with 15 on your jaws, when you do something like this and take out 14 and a half thou worth of error, I think you've come a long way. I hope you like that. Guys, well that's all I got for you. Let's review what you just saw. Uh, you saw a chuck that was running out 15 thou, whether it's the body of the chuck or the jaws of the chuck. Let's assume that you don't have soft jaws or soft jaw carriers and that you do have some scrap stock laying around. Grab a piece of material that is about three to four times the diameter of what you're going to be holding. Pop a pilot hole in it. Split it three different ways. Only two of them do not go all the way through to the center. The one slot that does go through to the center, you want it to be a fairly good slot, fairly decent. Uh, if the shim is only touching at the idea of the part as you compress your jaws and you bore that area away, it could loosen up. So make sure that when it squeezes your shim that you have a fairly good contact on that shim. Uh, for any type of reaming or boring operation, it's good to have a continuous surface. So make sure the shim protrudes down into the bore when you initially start it or close enough that you can push through with a drill and knock off any ugly stuff that's on the inside. 
uh, the 15th thou run out I got the part to run within a thou and you know if anybody wants you to do something that's closer than that flip side chances are you need to raise your price and see how serious they are about the concentricity spec that they put on your print the good thing about this is if you have the relief cuts in your collar and you blow the hole put a smaller shim in and squeeze it a little bit tighter and do it again you can use the same one and the same principle holds if you want to use a bigger diameter part in that same collar so long as you don't wipe out the edges or the, the webs that keep the thing with any kind of spring integrity intact you can continue to bore it so it's all a matter of how strong you are how strong your chuck is how tight you want to do it which part looks like a dozen different variables anyway this is a good trick I have about a thousand of these bushings laying around for all different sizes for little work big work whatever works good try it out uh, if you like it and it does take the slop out of your job and you get away with it and you're thrilled with what you got leave me a comment in the line below and if there's something you still don't understand or you have a suggestion on how to improve this write that down as well so until my next video Joe Pye Advanced Innovations Austin Texas I'm out